Most AI agents just gather information and escalate to a human, maybe after a generic AI reply or two. But real support means solving problems, not passing them off. This voice agent pulls customer data, makes decisions, and takes action, like extending free trials or closing tickets in Zendesk. Here's how to build it. So here is our agent, and of course, it is built in VoiceFlow. Now, our agent has three separate parts, authentication, the agent itself, and actions it can take. Let's start with authentication, because that's where our users are going to start. So here is our authentication, and you'll see that when I open my agent, the first thing I'll be asked is for my email. That's because I think that the best agents you can build are agents that know who they're talking to. Now you'll see if I use a email that is not a valid email and is not in our system, in our case, it's just an Airtable for prototyping, our agent won't let us through. But if I use a valid email, then you'll see that our agent will be able to authenticate, it'll check in Airtable, and it'll ask how it can assist you with a billing inquiry today. This specific agent is just a billing inquiry agent. Now let me just kind of show you this. If I come down here, there's a couple of cool things we're doing. First of all, this is my Airtable function. It lets me search a table, and if it errors out, so if the user doesn't exist, we can just loop back around. But if we succeed, what we can actually do is we can set values that we get from Airtable as variables inside of VoiceFlow. And that lets us know who we're talking to, their name, their subscription tier, and how long is left on their free trial. Now these are gonna come in super handy later on, you'll see. Let me just show you our Airtable table really quickly though, because if we open it, this is all it is. If you are building any kind of app, you can actually have this yourself in like a SQL database. It doesn't need to be an Airtable database. This is just an example to make it easy to see. So whatever you need to go and pull into your agent, you can build a function to do that. And something else that's actually really cool is for this prototype, yes, I've actually asked the user what their email is. But if you are building an agent that is going to exist inside an authenticated environment, for example, inside an app, you can actually go and ask your agent to pull that data before the conversation even starts. If you're using web chat, the way you do that is you pass in variables from your web chat into your agent. For example, you could pass in like a token that authenticates the user. And in that way, well, you already know who you're talking to and you don't even have to ask. If you want to see that in action, by the way, head over to your VoiceLow dashboard and try using this support agent in the bottom corner. It already knows who you are. So, that is how authentication works for this agent. So our user authenticates, and then they get through to our agent. Now, this is where the brain of our agent is. And you'll actually notice we're using VoiceFlow's agent step. This means we don't have to go and build this all manually. We can instead just give it a prompt, give it instructions on what to do, and give it paths it can follow. So the way this agent is set up is in two different ways. So the first way is when you start a conversation with the agent, the agent step itself, it will automatically create a ticket. This is using VoiceFlow's tools feature, and it means that we don't have to worry about is this context that the users had a conversation going to make it into Zendesk. This again is a billing agent, so it can be really important. Like if we know a customer is repeatedly having billing issues, we probably want to get that on our radar before they have to come and talk to a human, otherwise it might cause churn, for example. And the second part to our agent is these paths. So we can get our agent to do various tasks. The main one we have built in this example is extending a free trial, but we have made sure there is an escape hatch. We're dealing with important questions here. So if our agent can't answer a billing question, we don't want it just to be like, can't help with that. We instead want to make sure there is a ticket that is updated and readable in Zendesk. I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then finally, when the user is satisfied, we want to end the conversation, so we have a path for that. And this agent does have access to our knowledge base, so it can pull information into its responses. All right, so that is how our agent itself works. When the user is satisfied, well, it's pretty simple. We use the JavaScript step, and we basically just strip out anything that isn't a conversation, like isn't a message from the user or the agent. The reason we need to do that is that VoiceLow's default memory can see function on tool calls. And the other thing we do is we just use the agent step one more time. We give it some instructions to add a ticket comment and update the ticket to close it. We don't need tickets open inside Zendesk, which have already been solved. So let's go and try it out in practice. I'm going to try my agent. So I'm still me. And my query is going to be really simple. I'm going to say, hey, how long is left on my subscription? 
and our agent knows this about me, it pulled it from the database, I'm currently on the free tier, there is three days remaining in my free trial. That's great. I don't need anything else. And you'll see. It's going to go and bump us over to success. So we had a great conversation with our agent there, but let's go and take a look inside Zendesk to see what actually is going on behind the scenes. Inside Zendesk, I'm going to look at my recently updated tickets. You'll see right here, there is a solved ticket. Now you can see here, this is the conversation we just had with our agent. It's added as a note inside Zendesk. So imagine I'm a human, I'm running a startup, and I want to keep an eye on questions people are having with the subscription. This lets me keep an eye on trends, and it means that if a user reaches out to me, a human with a question, well, I already know the context of their previous conversations with our agent. So this is super convenient. Now, one thing you should know is in this little example, I've made it so that we only pass in this transcript into Zendesk after the user is happy or sad, after they've been satisfied with the results, or if it needs to be escalated to a human because they can't be answered by an agent. But you actually could improve this, just modify this here to go and update Zendesk every single conversation pair. So that means every time the user says something and the agent says something. Then that way, you have a transcript effectively streaming in real time. So if the user just drops off and doesn't say if the answer was good or not, you don't need to worry about it. You've still got that conversation history to reference. OK, so that is the bulk of our agent's logic. But I promise to show you an agent which can actually do things. And that is what's going on here. So the sudden actions which you might want to not give an agent full control over. And one of them is probably handling really complex billing things, like giving users extended free trials or upgrading their subscription. If you just let an AI do that, someone might be able to find an exploit to go and get a 7 million day free trial. And um, hey, that's a very long free trial. 7 million is a very large number. So we actually can break out of our agent debt, and we can actually deterministically go through this flow. And that's what we do here. Extend free trial. If the user asks to extend a free trial, what we will do is we will follow this line. We will check if they've already extended their free trial. This is the value we got from Airtable and we'll check if they are actually eligible for a free trial upgrade in the first place. So only free users can, and they need to currently have a trial, at least in our company. So if they are eligible, we'll update that value inside Airtable. And again, Airtable is just an example here. You could do an API call, you could just go and modify a SQL database. Whatever you want to do, Function can do basically anything. And if we don't want to give them an extension, for whatever reason, they're not eligible, we can instead just give them a canned message saying, unfortunately, you're not eligible for a trial extension at this time. Using the message step actually is still really relevant. I know a lot of people want to do everything inside the agent step, but if you have like really specific language, for example, stuff that needs to be approved by legal, then using a message step makes sure your exact message is shown to the user. So let's take a look at that now. So for context, this is my Airtable database. I have three days remaining on my trial, and I have not extended my trial yet. Let's see how that looks after I try using my agent. So I'll again say I'm me, and I'll say, hey, I'd love to extend my free trial, please. This is a cool product. And we'll do that. And our agent will help us out. So our agent said it had extended our free trial. Let's go check Airtable to see if it actually did. Well, there we go. Trial days remaining is now set to seven and has extended trial is set to true. And if I jump back over to my agent, well, I can test it. And now if I try and get another free trial extension, cause it'd be nice to get a second one. I can give it my email. And I can tell it I want to extend my trial. And it's going to say, let me request it. And I'm not eligible for trial extension at this time. Our agent successfully went down this path, validated information it pulled from Airtable, and did not let me go and extend my trial again. This is where agentic and deterministic agents fit together really well. You have all the power of AI and all the control over just variables and logic. And that's it, a fully functional AI agent that actually solves support tickets rather than just replying to them. It pulls real data, makes smart decisions, and takes action, all powered by VoiceFlow. You can grab the exact template I built. It's linked in the description below. If this was helpful, give it a like, subscribe for more builds like this, and let us know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching, and now go build something powerful.